In this exercise, we'll complete the third item in our programming to-do list, switching the app from portrait to landscape mode. Portrait mode is when your phone is upright, like this. Landscape mode is when you tilt your phone to the side, like this. You can configure your apps to work in either or both of these orientations. For Bullseye, we want to make the app work in just landscape mode, because the game just looks and feels better that way. But before we do this, I wanted to explain how screen dimensions work on iOS. On iOS, screen dimensions are given in terms of points. For example, the iPhone XR screen consists of 414 points horizontally and 896 points vertically. For landscape, these dimensions are switched. But what is a point? On older devices, like the ancient iPhone 3GS and the first iPads, it was very simple. One point equals one pixel. As a result, these low-resolution devices don't look very sharp because of their big, chunky pixels. You might already know what a pixel is. In case you don't, it's the smallest element that a screen is made up of. Changing the color values of these pixels produces a visible image on the display. The more pixels, the better the image looks. On the high-resolution retina display of the iPhone 4 and later models, one point actually corresponds to two pixels horizontally and vertically, so four pixels in total. It packs a lot of pixels into a very small space, making for a much sharper display. So in the example of the iPhone XR, portrait mode is 828 by 792 pixels, and in landscape, the opposite, and that's double the points listed here. On some very large iOS devices, it's even crazier. They have a 3x resolution with nine pixels for every point. Insane. It's not only the number of pixels that differs between the various iPhone models. Over the years, they've received many different form factors, starting with the very small 3.5 inch screen in the beginning, all the way up to the 6.5 inches on the iPhone XS Max models. In fact, there are so many devices and form factors these days that it's hard to keep track of them all. To help with this, the team behind the Paint Code app has developed a handy chart that you can use to see the dimensions of each device in points and pixels, which you can see right here. In the early days of iOS, there was only one screen size. But those days of one size fits all are long gone. Now we have a variety of screen sizes to deal with. Remember that iOS works with points instead of pixels, so you only have to worry about the differences between the screen sizes measured in points. The actual number of pixels is only important for graphics designers because images are still measured in pixels. So just remember, developers work in points, designers work in pixels. For the time being, you'll just work with the iPhone XS screen of 414 by 896 points, just to keep things simple. Later on in this course, you'll see that since you're using SwiftUI's flexible layout engine, the app actually looks pretty great on other screen sizes as well. Okay, we have our app here where we left it off last time. And if you remember, we had that challenge where we had a knock-knock joke. Now we don't actually need this knock-knock joke in the final build of Bullseye. So there's a couple of ways we could get rid of things. The first is there's a way to comment out code. And what a, the way you do it is you just do two slashes to comment out a single line, or if you have multiple lines, which we do down here, you can use slash star to begin a comment and star slash. So you can notice that by adding these special characters, the two slashes for a single line, or the slash star and star slash for multiple lines, the text has become gray. And what this means is this text is there for us to see as humans, but the Swift compiler, the computer, basically ignores it. So it's as if these lines didn't exist. And so this is a way where you can keep track of code you wanna squirrel away for yourself later, or more commonly, it's used for notes to yourself, like remember to delete this later on. Or it's also good for messages for other people who aren't yourself who may be working with your code later, if you wanna explain your thinking or what a certain section of code does, or so on. But it's actually not good practice to leave a whole bunch of code commented out on your app because it gets to be a mess really quick. I just wanted to show you what commenting was and it's an option to you, but I don't really recommend it for stuff like this. That's what something like source control is really for. And you'll learn about that later in another course on this site. So I'm gonna go ahead right now and just delete those lines of code because we really don't need a knock knock joke anymore. And if we were using source control, it'll be very easy to get that code back if we ever needed to in the future.
Now, what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to set up this project to use landscape mode. And so one way you can do this is by opening this panel over here to represent the navigator and select the first option in the navigator tab bar over here, which is the project navigator, and select the first item here, which is the project settings. And this has various settings that you'll need as you're developing iOS apps. And one of them, you wanna make sure that the target, the bullseye target is selected in deployment info right here. It has the supported device orientations. And by default, an app is, is selected uh, to run in portrait, landscape left, and landscape right. But we don't wanna run in portrait for this app. So we're just gonna uncheck the portrait option. Okay, so we can go ahead and test this by building and running. And you can see that even though I'm holding the app in portrait, it's only presenting in landscape mode. So if you had an app like this and a user was holding it in their hands, they would obviously just rotate their device. And you can actually rotate your device here in the simulator as well. If you go to hardware, rotate left, or hardware, rotate right, it will rotate the device around. So we'll just set it up like that. And let me make this a little bigger for future runs. Okay, there we go. Let's go back to Xcode. I'm gonna stop running here and click on contentview.swift and start up automatic updating again. Now you notice something strange. So we just changed the project setting to only support landscape mode, but our preview is set up to preview our app in portrait mode. Well, that's not great because we're developing our app not in the way it's actually gonna run and that can be a little bit confusing. So the way this works is in Swift UI, there's this special object we haven't talked about down here called content view previews. And this content view previews object is a preview provider. And long story short, the goal of this object is to tell Swift UI what to present over here as the preview. And it has this property here called previews and I return some view and whatever you put in here is what's gonna be displayed over here on this pane. And right now it's very simply just to show the content view. Hold on, give me one second. Let me space, fix the spaces to tabs to two spaces. Okay, so in order to make this display in landscape mode, we can call a method on content view called preview layout. And we're gonna use the option dot fixed. And this takes a width and a height. And for the width, we're gonna use the 896 value. And for the height, we're gonna use the 414. This is the width and the height in landscape mode of an iPhone XR. Now that we have that, just click the resume button again in automatic previewing. And you can see that the preview is now set up to use landscape, which is great. However, it is a little hard to see over here on the right now, so we're gonna redo our navigator layout. So we're gonna go to editor, layout, canvas on bottom. And we're gonna make it a little bit smaller by just changing it. I think 75% is about right for this screen. And there we go, we can now preview our app in landscape.